Okay, try to focus on Predator Bay, but sometimes when you have a fish basement, uh, not everything cooperates with you. And we're gonna have to take a little deviation from that to fix a problem with the 125 gallon Asian Street tank. Let me show you what happened. Okay, 125 Asian Street, my easy tank, usually. Except for when my dumb FX6 breaks. So uh, it stopped working and I took it apart and I found that a little piece of the filter material got into the pump housing and the impeller shaft uh, cracked right at the top where it, it meets the uh, I guess the the part that not the magnet part but the other end uh, sorry to the technical terms there uh, at any rate it doesn't work and that's the bottom line and so I went and I looked all right what does it take to get a new impeller well it takes $63, it's, that's what I found, and that seems ridiculous. I was never happy paying $300 for a stupid plastic tub in the first place, so. Uh, as you can see, we have a little time to figure out a solution here, and I, I've got the old, the handy dandy aquarium co-op coarse sponge filters, uh, one in each corner, and uh, they're doing the job of, you know, keeping the tank filtered. It's a very mature tank. They'll get covered in bacteria really quickly. I just dial the feeding back a little bit, Give, it, give the sponge filters a little bit of time, uh, you know, a week or so, and uh, they'll be right there in line. And mechanical filtration won't be as good as FX6, but they'll keep everybody healthy. Uh, gives me time to figure out how to fix this. Well, if you saw the title of the video, you know that my solution is I'm not going to fix that FX6, and I'm not going to replace it. I'm going to put in a DIY sump for the 125. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the 220 as well. It's something I talked about wanting to do over there, but I'm going to do it for both of them. And let me show you part of the reason I decided to do that. Okay, one of the side effects of building Predator Bay in the 600 gallon aquarium is that you get these giant crates that the glass gets shipped in. Uh, there's lots of wood here, lots of very usable wood. Um, so I'm not going to let this go to waste. Uh, in the United States right now, in April of 2021, uh, wood prices are insane. So this is actually quite a blessing here. We got quite a bit of wood here uh, that is going to save me a lot of money because this is going to do, this is everything I need to build two DIY custom sumps, one for the 125 Asian Stream and one for the 220 Amazonian Jungle Tank. And that's, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these apart, I'm going to cut them up, and uh, I'm going to make sumps. Okay, well nothing goes the waste in the fish basement, so we have leftover Matala mat filter from the 3000 and 1800 uh, Predator Bay build, and showed you the leftover wood outside, and there's leftover lighting from the 3000 gallon light upgrade. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the FX6, I'm going to clean up my mess under here, I'm going to actually, this is going to force me to straighten up all of these cables and you know that bird's nest of stuff down there. And uh, we're gonna line underneath the tank with the plywood from outside. Um, and then we're gonna use pond liner. It's only a 22 mil, it's a nice thin pond liner. And we're gonna line the inside of the sump with the pond liner. And then we're gonna use the metalla mat as the dividers. We're gonna create three sections. So when you cut the metalla mat to size and you push it in there, it's, it's gonna give you a nice rigid divider. The water can move through it and so what we're going to do is we're going to replace the return from the MX FX6 with an overflow box. So we're going to overflow the water down into the first chamber of the sump, which what I use is I use a milk crate and I put filter fluff in it and the pipes will come into that. It'll be suspended up so then the water will go through the filter fluff, which will catch the, material, the mechanical, physical things with mechanical filtration. Water will drain out. The metalla mat will create a divider, the entire middle section, all the way over to here, where there's gonna be another metalla mat divider, will be a vegetable filter. Uh, a la Father Fish, I will make a nice deep sand bed of dirt, clay, gravel, like fluorite, and sand, and there'll be a light that'll be bolted up here, shining down the, the light from the 3000 gallon that we're gonna repurpose here. And then I'm gonna take all of these plants that were actually just stuck in here, these swords, 
all these different sores I was just rehabbing in here. I'm gonna move them down to the filter and then the last chamber will just be the pump or the pump return pump and I'll take the heater out of the display tank and put it down into the sump that way just be less you know any sort of uh, non-natural look to the tank one less piece of equipment up there to distract from the you know the view of the tank and then simply uh, a return pump that just returns the water back to this side just like uh, like on the 220 or, or any tank with a sump so that is the plan uh, to fix the 125 we're gonna we're gonna get it sumped all right the recycled diy sump is in progress as you can see i've got the inside of the stand lined with some of the uh crate material from the uh the glass water for predator bay so this is basically just going to be our structure to hold our pine lawner down here uh, which will line the inside of it and you see it's being inspected right now by my assistant but uh, she's checking out that we've got insulation on the bottom of the sump i'm going to cut out another little piece over there and it actually turned out that they were using insulation to separate the glass in the crate so got that for free too so we'll go ahead and uh line the bottom of that and we'll get the pond liner fit and then we'll work on cutting the matala mat to create the the three sections of the sump so you have the uh, the the water is going to drain down into this section here. Do we do something like that to uh, you know just catch the water as it comes in to get any physical solids out of the water column? We're going to have our first matala mat, and then we're going to build up the planted substrate section, deep substrate, uh, and then we'll have the return section on the end. Um, you see, I'm draining the tank right now. I'm going to have to drain it all the way, you know, really low because. I need to be able to get it low enough or light enough so I can pick it up and slide it out just a tad. To get the overflow box on there, I'm going to need to pull the tank out about a quarter of an inch to uh, give myself enough space to, to get this comfortably behind here and not have it compressed between the wall and the tank. We don't want it to put any pressure on anything, torque any of the glass or anything like that. But uh, so we're going to let this drain down now and when it gets low enough that I can move it out just a tad I'll get the overflow in there and get the plumbing worked out and go ahead and get the the rest of the insulation in the sump and get the liner in there and then as far as the outside at first I was just going to paint the outside of the the crate material but it's not the greatest wood it's fine for structure for holding the pond liner but it doesn't really look that great and I think if I leave it like this temporarily, uh, it'll look really ugly and it'll cause me to go ahead and finish the outside trim of this tank, which I never did. I intended to paint the trim white like I did over on the 150 and then of course make uh, woodwork something, you know, like on the same style as the 265 or the 3000 uh, to where it has a, uh, matches the look of the rest of the uh, aquarium basement. So. That's probably what I'll do is just put a little coat of paint on it to protect it, but then, you know, leave it ugly looking, get, I'll, you know, get the trim on the top and everything, but get it ready for me to, to go ahead and put like a uh, proper skin on the outside of the aquarium. All right, we got some progress here. So we have the tank filled back up. The tank has been pulled out from the wall a little bit, and now we have plenty of room for our new overflow box, uh, which is, the plumbing you see there is it's just roughed in. It's not cemented, but give you an idea, the water's gonna come down and it's gonna come over and it's gonna go into our, our media basket here, which is gonna catch all our physical solids. And then the water's gonna drain out into the bottom. And you can see that we, we now have the sump lined and using Metala mat, we've created uh, two, uh, three chambers. So the uh, settling chamber or the filter or the media or the physical media chamber uh, the water passed through the Metala mat. We have the finer grade inside facing our vegetable filter where we're going to have our plants growing just to keep the substrate in. And then the more coarse material on the outside uh, to block anything coming through. But the water is going to come through. Now you can see we have this large lit middle chamber where we have uh, a dirt sand mix on the bottom topped off with roughly about an inch and a half of the dirt sand mix topped off by roughly three and a half inches of a mix of uh, fluorite and some gravel. Um, so a clay-based gravel and then some regular gravel. 
uh, to give the plants something, something to plant the plants into without going down into the dirt and the sand, let, letting those roots get down there. And we've repurposed one of the old lights from the 3,000 gallon uh, that was upgrade that's been upgraded. It's gonna be part of that big update video coming on the 3,000 pretty soon. And uh, then lastly, we we have the same sort of setup here with them telemat, just reversed, so that the finer materials facing the inside of the vegetable filter to keep that substrate in. And then lastly, we have our return chamber where we are going to have a uh, pump, a return pump, using the uh, Lifeguard Quiet One. I've used these in a, in a bunch of situations like this, return pumps or, you know, little, you know, odds and end utility pumps. They've always worked really well. So we got another one of those. They're also inexpensive and they don't use a ton of electricity. Uh, we have the return nozzle and then some tubing. So the return pump will be down here and then, you know, somewhere up here, We'll just add the return nozzle uh, to the side of the tank. And then lastly, a uh, timer for the light uh, so that the, the refuge, well, the vegetable filter light or the, the plant, the planted area of the, of the sump, you know, we can control that light independently. Since the tank lights are Kessels and they're being controlled by a Kessel controller. Uh, as you can see, I did, I chose not to paint the side of the, uh, sump because I want it looking really ugly so that every time I walk by it it pushes me to get off my butt and finish <laughs> the stand and trim it out and make it look nice uh, like the other tanks. I'm starting to get quite a backlog here. I have this tank which the sand isn't finished the outside, the 600 gallon isn't finished on the outside and also Predator Bay of course which is still being built is not finished on the outside yet so lots of work to do there. Um, as you can see, the, the, the liner is fairly neatly down, uh, pinned down. I basically got a bunch of these little plastic clips uh, off Amazon. They're pretty cheap. You get like 100 of them for, I don't know, less than 10 bucks, I'm sure. Uh, and I actually use those as well on the 150 reef tank because if I, re I had these little metal clips in there, and that's salt water. That's definitely the last thing you want, all that... Uh, salt and everything just rusting those away so those have been replaced pulled out and replaced with those clips so kind of worked out because i think i had ordered them in the past but they never came so and then i just forgot about it so uh this build caused me to think about it again and now i have them and you know they're working well uh for what they're intended for okay so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna get all of that plumbing uh cemented in i'm gonna get the sump filled up and see the python over there and uh I'm gonna get the the return set up and uh, get this thing running, and let's uh, let's let's get the the tank you know running through the sump. So we're gonna come down through the sump, back up, and uh, we're gonna have a, a whole new setup here, and uh, no impeller to break <laughs> like on the FX6. Oh, and lastly, we'll take all these swords, these rehab swords that I just kind of stuck in here, really weren't part of this scape. Um, I've never been overly happy, but I needed some place to put them. So we'll get all of those guys out, and those will be down in the sump, and then we'll come back, and we'll need to replant, get some new plants for this tank, and I'm definitely looking at, at some, uh, some species of stem plants that are much more in theme with the uh, Asian stream tank, and I think that's going to really uh, juice up the appearance of this tank. It's getting a little haggard because I've been uh, messing with it too much, taking things in and out and using it for rehab purposes, and not, not as much as what it should be, which is a beautiful display tank that's right next to my work area. So <clears throat> something nice for me to look at and enjoy. All right, let's get uh, back to work. All right, the 125 has been sumped. We now have a new sump with actually 60 gallons of water volume in there. So I don't know, is this still a 125 or is it now a 185? I don't have to think about that. Uh, but at any rate, we have a functional filter albeit ugly because I chose not to beautify the outside of it which will force me to finish the stand the veneer on the stand or the skin on the stand to make it match up with the you know like on the 1500 gallon system or the 3000 where it has the nice wood paneling work you know add it to the list right with the I need to finish the outside of the 600 I need this finish the outside of this pretty soon I'll have to finish the outside of Predator Bay so Lots, lots of beautification work to do, but uh, at least I have functioning aquariums running so that while I'm working on it, I can look at the fish. Um, so I can see we do have the return nozzle and over here on the left, we have the overflow box coming down into our physical media uh, container and settling chamber. 
into our vegetable filter, which is handling our biological, the deep sand bed, and our vegetable filter to get rid of nitrates, and then our lastly, our equipment chamber. Um, so just been a few days, everything's going great, but already a few things I know I want to do. Uh, first of all, the overflow box, I have a towel sitting on there. You hear the sound of air rushing in, so I have some uh, little pieces of acrylic out in the shed, so I'm going to fabricate a uh, top for that just to keep it quiet. It's fine with a towel, but just want to do something that looks nicer. Um, I may one day modify the basket set up there. I just literally just reuse what I had laying around. It's working fine. I might leave it or I might do something else. I don't know. And the middle section, um, I want to add a second light. So the light's in the middle. Uh, I need to modify the stand slightly so that I could have two of these lights spread out further. And I also ordered a couple small USB nano air pumps. I want to put some air stones in here just to break up the surface. See how we're getting, just after a few days, we're getting a film on the surface. Um, so I just want to get rid of that, have the gas exchange. Uh, that's going to be better uh, for the plants uh, and uh, for the system as a whole. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, it is definitely getting the job done and it is uh, more resilient, I would say, because the only thing to really go wrong with it, uh, for the most part, obviously, there could be kind of a plumbing leak or something like that. But uh, I think the most likely thing would be the quiet one pump I have in there. If there were a flaw or if there was a failure with that pump, uh, I do have a backup. So they're very inexpensive on its, and, it's, and they're very low power. So it's it's easy thing to fix. It costs, it costs the same to buy two of those pumps as it did just the impeller to fix the FX6. So... You know, it's ridiculous. But so anyway, we have the resilience. We just need to beautify the stand uh, and uh, then we'll be all set. Uh, real quick, uh, I figure we'll go ahead and uh, feed these guys, even though it's not really a feeding video. Well, I guess it just became a feeding video, didn't it? But uh, so the fish are definitely enjoying uh, the new filtration. And oh, almost forgot. You'll notice in the tank, a lot of the plants are gone because I moved all the rehab sorbs down to the bottom. Uh, so. There's a lot of, uh, the tank's looking kind of barren, uh, and I've been saying I need to give it some love. I was using it as a rehabilitation tank for swords that got chewed up by cichlids and things like that, and uh, now that I've got the 3000 all balanced out where the swords are growing well in there, I don't need that here, and I need the, the swords down there in the vegetable filter, and so what I do need is more plants for the 125, so I have ordered some new plants. So we have uh, some scaping to do, and we're going to bring this tank back to uh, its original look where it actually was a lush jungle Asian stream tank. Right now it kind of looks like a, uh, a half populated jungle stream tank. Um, so yeah, we'll get it back up to its uh, full glory. You know the good thing about making it all the way to the end of an aquarium domain video? Sometimes you get some spoilers, like the giant monstrosity behind me that is fully glassed and silicone and ready for water test. And the grow outs for the 3000, which I'm going to show you right now.